All right, we out here. Another episode of Legends Find a Way podcast. We got Jordan Spector from Spector Art in the house. Woo! Oh, Never done that intro. <laughs> we out here. Super grateful to have you on today, dude, and looking forward to getting to your story because you have covered a lot of ground from physical therapy in college to Temple University walk on for football to Philly sports artist featured on billboards in New England after he goes from the Super Bowl. You've been doing all kinds of stuff, dude. Shout out to you. Appreciate that. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a cool ride so far. So I'm excited to share some knowledge, drop the, the journey, how I got here. Let's go. So let's dive in. As far as everything with the art, because obviously that's where you're at now, and there's this huge swath of, of the journey in between that. When did you first start getting into art and start to express your creativity in your life? I get asked that a lot of people ask me, you know, how long have you been doing this for? And I tell them my entire life. And it's true. From the moment I was a kid and I could start drawing, that's all I ever did. You know, um, I would draw things that at that day and age that just caught my eye, you know, from fire trucks to airplanes for a very long time. I was just the airplanes. I'm going to be a pilot when I was a kid to uh, skyscrapers, roller coasters, Pokemon, all kinds of stuff. And it's so ironic because the other day I was at my parents' house and we were going through some old stuff. And I look back and go, wow, so this is pretty good for, for the age I was at and that point I was at. And I used to only really do black and white sketches. I never did a lot of color, which is what I do now. So that I've done my entire life and nobody ever knew that about me. Oh, really? Until not even in high school, I took art classes in high school just for me, for, for myself, because I enjoyed it. And I never got too into it. I never put it out there. I was more focused on football and, and that lifestyle. And um, it wasn't until I really got back into it after quitting football in college that people started to see it, pretty much after making social media for my artwork. Right. And that's, that's when it all started. So, so <laughs> obviously started off with art when you were younger. So how does the art and the sports intertwine? Because you're most you're most well known for your sports art. Most recently, the Joe Burrow uh, painting that you made for the Heisman Trophy winner, which you're now in contact with, which is super yeah. exciting. So shout out to you. I know you've been down in Baton Rouge. You've been hanging out down there. They they're loving you and embracing you as one of their own <laughs> on every station down the bayou, right by you, right? So, dude. So how does how does art and Sports intertwined with you. How did that happen? Well, it's always kind of going back and forth. Um, because like I said, it was it was always football first and art as a hobby, you know. And the more I got into football, the less I did art, especially in high school as I got better and better at football and got more notoriety for that. That was my focus. That's what I was most passionate about. And um, you know, like when I did artwork like my teacher in high school put it in contests and stuff but it wasn't out there that much and then uh you know when i went to school i wasn't focusing on that either i was like oh i'm gonna go to school you know focus on my academics and then i miss football a lot and you know that which i'm sure some people get into the house training together yeah, trying to walk on yeah, yeah. to temple football but that whole uh journey began and then it wasn't until after that ended football ended for sure that i got back into artwork and uh, but the way to intertwine is that you know I'm passionate about all sports, especially football. It's my most knowledge is football, right. but you know that inspires all the work that I do. So as far as football is concerned, you played in high school. It sounds like what position were you? I played running back and uh, linebacker in, in high school. Crunching people, huh? Yeah. Crunching people scoring touchdowns. Lit specialist. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Not me. Quick feet, let's go. Like hit the gap and you know, run after some people. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. And no doubt you brought that same energy into countless pieces of your work. And for those of you who haven't seen the work, um, <laughs> I'll post his Instagram and Facebook handles below, but really just awesome stuff, especially if you're from Philly, you can't not love it. If you're from other places, he does one offs depending on who he likes or what's in the media that he's enjoying at the moment. And, the different events that are going on, which is always exciting to see what he's going to come up with next. And I have to admit, sometimes I get a little heads up on concoctions, so I always <laughs> enjoy that process as well. I get to be a part of it. But um, dude, so 
obviously high school football kind of had the art of the background, no one really knew, then you went to college and you were, at that time, it sounds like you were mostly doing still sports. Yes, yeah, it was, uh, you know, academics. And then as, as you know, we got into training for football because I was like, we got a shot at this, we can do right, this. Right, right. You know, I see these guys walking around. So, you know, <laughs> that, was, that was life for first two years of college. And then once I was done, uh, football, I, I didn't get right back in Harvard right away, but it was as I pulled away from football and started to feel like I needed something to fill the void that I got back into artwork. And it was not only that, I don't know if I ever told you to do this, but I also had a friend's mom who was an artist from high school and she knew I was an artist too growing up. You know, she was one of the few that knew that because she knew my mom, stuff like that. And she, she said something one day, just randomly said, you should never waste your talents. You know, and that kind of, I still remember that day vividly, right? Because that like flipped the switch for me on yeah, this. Yeah. I don't know. It, it wasn't like I was like, oh, I'm going to make a business. It was oh, like, you know what? You're right. Let me start drawing again. That would probably, that would probably ease my mind a little bit. Yeah. So that's why that helped give me a little bit of a push. So it was almost like those, those words at the right time and it helped you to bring that like therapeutic practice back into your life and thus it sort of just became yes it yeah. just became right wasn't on purpose wasn't planned it was just me getting back into it which i knew eventually i'd probably start drawing again but it's interesting that i didn't do it for a while you yeah. know so and i think i, I wonder what would have happened during that time right yeah i usually don't ever say stuff like that but that was the one of the few times i ever caught myself doing it. i wonder what would have happened in your life you know who am i to ask right. you that question if if i had done it for that much longer in that, in that time, what would happen? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, I wonder that sometimes too, but I don't think about it too much because I'm like, the, happened, way, the, way I am, the way I am as I've matured is that I think a lot of things, not a lot of things, everything happens for a reason. So that's why I believe. So, and speaking of that, I know that you went through some stuff during like football, and obviously, for, if you didn't already guess, we walked over the team, Jordan made it, I did not. And uh, I saw Jordan on the day of make probably the most spectacular catch I've ever actually seen in person to make a team. It was right in front of me, actually. <laughs> I was at the other end of the field. And, uh, and I think it's important for me to mention this. Jordan, with all due respect, didn't have the best mm. hands of all time. He just did. In fact, I could do many a pass and he dropped. <laughs> but for whatever reason, on this day, wow, let's not get into it. He throws much. the ball of all balls. This dude lays out like eight feet and catches this thing. I'll never forget it because as, when I saw him do that, I was like, he's going to make a team. I just knew it. And I was just like, I, half of me was like, you piece of junk, right? You suck. <laughs> and the other half was like, you shot the fucking Jordan for just showing up and doing it. I was so amped for you, dude. Like, I was like, you deserve that. And so, of course, when you found out, and of course, you're just such like an empathetic and good dude, you're like, dude, like, you deserve it too, man. Like, et cetera. They didn't want my back, blah, 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 all the stuff. But it didn't matter. Like, you earned that spot. And so, speaking of that spot, what happened in your career? Because, you know, listen, you're a walk-on. Like, for those of you who don't know, that means that he wasn't a scholarship athlete. He showed up to a tryout, and they were like, your game's good. We'll add you to the team. you got to go from there. So, like, how do you – what's your mindset as you enter a team in Division One when you haven't played since high school and you're getting yourself ready to go? And what was the journey there with your football career? I mean, that was super exciting because not a lot of people thought that I would make – a team like that, you know, no, not like it's from my high school maybe that far, you know. So that was really cool just in itself to say I was on the team. And I think we joked, like, oh, we just want to make the team get the gear. Oh, yeah, that's, that was cool, you know, getting the gear. But once you get once you get into it, you, you're thrown into the fire pretty quick. And, you know, I hadn't played football for, you know, almost two years. So it was kind of weird to put pads on and get into it. But, um, you know, it – it was a uh, interesting time because you realize pretty quickly how hard of a lifestyle those guys live, and I have a lot of respect for student athletes because it's it's a full time job. And we won't get in that conversation of student right. athletes should be paid, but I personally think that something should change because it is very demanding schedule, lifestyle, all that stuff. But um, you know, through that, you know, once I got into it. Um, you just kind of build rapport. And at that time, the coach that was there, you know, I won't get into that too much either, but he wasn't the best of coaches or people, or it just wasn't the, the greatest time to be joining. Um, but I, I played out that year, and, and when you're a walk-on, you don't get a lot of uh, 
you don't get a lot of respect. It's not that you're treated bad, but you're not you're not looked at as someone who can contribute a lot to the team. So you don't you don't really even get your shot, you know. So most of that year was a lot of scout team and then building that rapport and you know getting more and more looks and stuff, but never really getting to the point of, of getting to to play on the field and like doing a lot, you know? right? Yeah. Play a little bit, you know. You, 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 you kind of see yourself in there more, but not a whole lot. Um, <clears throat> but it, it was a real grind, you know, getting through that and the lifestyle of it. And then uh, come the end of the season, and this is when I realized how much of a business college football is. We get a call one day and to come down to the facilities for team meeting, and all of a sudden half the coaching staff is gone. And, you know, they, hey, guys, uh, you know, Coach Dazio is gone. Um, he has taken a job with – uh, X, Y, or Z. Um, you good? Yeah, of course. No. He, has, he has taken a uh, job with you know whatever university, and we are currently looking for a new coach. Wow. So, and it's funny because you could tell a lot of people are smiling or <laughs> like, ah, you know, because right. um, you know it just wasn't the best of environments to be in. Um, but then you know, very good thing happened for Temple football, which is. Matt Rule came back, who is now the head coach of the Panthers for a reason. Unbelievable. And um, <clears throat> he's a very good coach. He's to totally opposite from the standpoint of he's a player's coach and he builds a relationship with everybody. He knows everybody's name, you know. So um, that was cool to experience him. And then not too so long. Real quick, one second before you hop into the back. So I think this is important. Again, I just want to touch on the fact that you were a walk on and you made the team. I know people that are listening to this are obviously <clears throat> friends of yours or maybe they're into sports and they're into personal development growth, whatever it is that has them following either one of us or pillars of growth, et cetera. Uh, but here's the question. So like, what were the three things that you felt were the reasons you made the team? Because um, there were like 40 guys there, right? There was a lot. There were a lot of guys there. There was, and one guy who made it with me, it was his third or fourth time trying to okay. So what, what was it that got you on the team? What were the three things? I think number one was um, the dedication we put in, the time we put in, you know, sticking to a schedule and, and putting in, you know, what, six months of yeah, was no rigorous work. Sure. We were in the best shape of our life, for sure. Yeah. And that was the pinnacle of the best shape I've ever been in. Yeah. It, it slowly went down after that. <laughs> even, the ball. even the workouts that I was doing at the visual level were not up to par of what Paul Melizia had us doing. So that was pretty unique to, to know that he was able to get us, yeah. and turn us into monsters. And pretty much. Much. And gyms all scattered across right. the Bronx County, Montgomery County. Yeah, so I, I think that dedication and the consistency, you either make that in the same category or not, but consistency, like anything you do, you have to be consistent in your back. So, and the other thing is the mindset of cutting out, cutting out, um, Anything that could interrupt that process, like not drinking as much, eating the right food, force feeding ourselves to gain that weight, stuff like that. And then I, I guess the third thing would be the focus, especially when the time came for the trial, because I the night before I had not slept much at all. There was like there was like a party next door or something like that. And I literally was our house. Um but I literally like I, I was in this like overdrive mode where nothing was going to get in my way. I just had a level of focus that like, you know, I can remember that level of focus. I've had it before, you know, it was, it was unique and I was ready to go mentally. So I think that's another thing is finding that inner focus to, to like you said, I don't, I'm not the best receiver, but, but I bought out that. Balled out. I, I saw a diamond, that would have been on the ESPN 100. <laughs> Walk on makes it with unbelievable catch. You know, did did a really good job on the forty and the other you know, the drills and stuff. You know what I mean? So I think those different things uh, resulted in that. Right on. How do you feel like some of that has translated into your work that you do with your art? I think it's big time. I think football in general molds you into a certain type of person of staying disciplined or, or putting in the work to get a result. You know. I think that like that helped mold Ryan today football itself. So I think those factors I described before with with getting to that um, that point of, of 
making the team, the pinnacle. The pinnacle has, has carried over to what I do now with art, you know, which is again consistency, you know, uh, being dedicated to it, to the craft, um, to not letting certain things distract you, which still happens, but trying to, you know, you gotta make an attempt. Um, and having that level of focus. So it still applies with that or anything else. Um, so yeah, and I want to dive more into that stuff here in a second. But before we get that, continue on with the story. So you were, so Matt Rule comes in. He's the head coach now of the, Pan, of the Panthers. Then he was the coach at Temple. So what did that do for? And I think this is a cool lesson in leadership as well, because obviously I think we both agree he definitely has a level of leadership. <laughs> That's how to go from college to, college to a big time, bigger time college to the yeah, story. The history itself is pretty special. <clears throat> so, and, and, I, and I wish I, I had been able to have a closer relationship with him, but I just wasn't there long enough to do that. But but he, he was a he was a good guy. And um, you know, when he came, when a new coach comes to any school, as you know, like Matt John, it's like everything makes sense, which is good or bad. In my case, it's good. Right. You know. So, um, you know, they get the old reports of who this guy was, who that guy was, but you, you, it's kind of a playing field. You gotta, you gotta earn your stripes. So then comes winter workouts and, and the grind. You know, football is a year round sport at that level. And, and I really was that pretty quick. You know, you get a couple of weeks off. And then <clears throat> those winter workouts that I did was the hardest thing I ever had to do because they weren't at the point of having an indoor facility, which they have now and a lot of schools have, but rain, sleep, blizzard, didn't matter, you were out there doing a workout. Oh, so, um, and, and a lot of the workouts you do were, one, one, yes, they get you better physically, but some of them were purely or almost purely a mental test. How far are you going to push yourself and not give up? You know, it's, it's a mental game some of the workouts and and being accountable too because like certain drills you would do if you mess up everybody goes back you gotta start over and everybody's mad at you because you messed up you know trickle down effect of that so um, what was what, what was one of those workouts you remember that was just like you never forget. one thing in specific and any college any division one college football player knows this term apparently it's called a mat, mat drill which is where like everybody lines up and it's a, a sequence of action. So, and it's very um, regimented. And like, if you make one little mistake, that's when they will sometimes say, all right, like he didn't do this right, or he, nope, didn't do it right, go back. Yeah, sorry, we're sorry. And, that, and if you have to start it, if you get through it every time, or it correctly, you're good. But if people start messing up, that's when it becomes a mental test because it's so challenging. But basically it's, it's you, you chop your feet. They say chuck feet, and then they say hit, you hit the ground. And then you gotta look up because they tell you to roll one way, roll one way, you know, roll, roll, and then pop up. And then you gotta you gotta sprint to them and they say stop and chuck feet more and drop again. And then um, it's like a couple other things after that too. And then and then you sprint through. When you sprint through, that's sometimes when they when they call somebody out. Oh, you know, Spectre didn't finish. Go back, you know, stuff like that. So I think it happened one time too. And I was like, what? You know, a lot of like, hell. So sometimes they'll probably just do it just the best people. Right, right. Know. But or maybe maybe I was slacking off. Who knows? But the point is, is that that was really challenging, really challenging. Um, so it's interesting to see that side of, of training at that level and how how demanding it is and, and how much work these guys put in all year just for you know twelve games. You know. Um, <clears throat> So we went through that, and then after that, you know, you work out more and more, and then comes spring football, where it's like four to six weeks of <laughs> four to six weeks. Of just blowing up on the podcast. Come on, man. He's too busy. He's, he's getting big, big time. Nah, nah. <laughs> it's like I think four to six weeks of spring football, where again, it's like the first real exposure of. You gotta earn your you know, earn your stripes, and that's have they start getting an idea of who the starters will be, stuff like that. And then they have the final cheering like game. So it was in that football season, spring football, where I got a concussion, got hurt again, and that's where I got hurt. And I, and I was thinking, oh, I'm good, I'll recover. But then came the question, all right, like how many concussions have you had? Is this worth it? Is this worth risking? How many have you had? 
I, ha I had a bunch in high school at, for one year, all in the same year, and a lot of guys on the team did as well because we had we did not have up to par equipment. And, and looking back at where research has come and lawsuits you see out there, it, it probably was not legal the way the helmets we had. And so after that, I bought my own helmet for my senior year. I never had any issues. Really? You know? Yeah. Wow. And, um, you know, I kind of, like, forgot about concussions part of the game and got another one. And, you know, although, although I wasn't, like, brain dead or anything like that, and it wasn't, like, super severe, it was to the point where, the doctor, added, the doctor probably asked every player, hey, honestly, how many concussions have you had? And I told him like four, like for sure concussions. And that's when he asked the question. He's like, you know, what are your aspirations? What, you know, do you have goals to go to the NFL? Stuff like that. And like, to be honest with myself, like, no, I'm probably not going to make it to the NFL. Right. You know, and everybody gets those thoughts that plays at that level because you do have a shot once you get there. You know, but, you know, so I, it took me two weeks to think on it and, and make the decision to stop playing. Damn. So you, then, get, you get to the pinnacle and then you get to a place where you just get a roadblock of a concussion that's been, that was sort of like a literally a, and figuratively a wake up call for you to just be like, hey, do I really want to do this? And then start to ask the question, what do I want to do? Yeah. Right. So, and meanwhile, what was your major in school? Kinesiology. All right, so what's happening with you in your mind after you have this concussion? You talk to this doctor and you start to make up your mind. Um, what was going through my mind was, is it worth it to keep going? Because, like, I don't have a scholarship. I, I don't have aspirations to make the NFL, realistically. Like, that, that's a dream, you know, but like, that's not reality. And... Um, you know, I just, I looked at it all and I looked at what I wanted to do and, and where school was going. And at that time, I had no indications of art, art business, anything like that. But, but I did have school and like just my general future on my mind. On my mind. So, um, you know, I played, I tried to play as smart as I could, you know. Um, that's the decision I made. Right on. And then from then, from then on out, obviously, you finished with kinesiology and then moved into... Physical therapy. Right. And so what was that like? What was that whole thing like? And then in conjunction with your art, because I think like that's where I reconnected with you after a while. Yeah. And you were doing both. And I was like, how are you doing both? They're <laughs> totally opposite. How does that work? You're like, yeah, I don't know. So like, and now things have completely changed. Yeah. Like everything's changed. Like, here's the thing. I don't think anyone can appreciate how much work you put in. Right, because you're a very humble guy and you downplay it severely because you're like, well, I'm just sort of what I do. I don't really think much of it, but you know, I'm going to tell you from my perspective, there's a zero percent chance of any of that. Like, I was a terrible student in that regard. Yeah, and uh, I'm curious as to like what, like what happened where you bridged that gap, started doing both those things, and then when did you get the idea that you want to take art to the next level? Um, well, the slightest idea of taking art to the next, the next step was when somebody paid me money for my artwork, and then I was like, wow, like somebody would would pay me to do this to. to something that I do as a hobby or that I really enjoy doing you know and that's that's when it started to, to bring ideas in my head that you know maybe maybe I can do this you know what I mean like it, it's in society in general it's looked or it's frowned upon to be an artist you know like how like how are you gonna make it as an artist you know type thing um, and that it wasn't like my parents were saying that type of stuff to me it's just stuff that you generally know um, so at that time, when I first got back into it, I didn't, I didn't think I'd ever be where I am today. But, um, you know, I started doing art, I'd say, going into senior year at, at Temple. Okay. Um, so almost a year after I was done football. How old were you? Um, 20? 20? 20 years old. Okay. That's a good reference point for all you 20 year olds out there. 20, 21? Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right in that range. And that was just me like getting back into sketching again, doing it for fun. Um, I took I took one art class at Red Temple my senior year, so I was doing art for that too, just another excuse to do more art. Um, and then I started to get into it, you know. And uh, what, was, what was the original question? <laughs> how how did yeah, that happen sometimes? How did after <coughs> you were done with football? 
how do they work as you intertwine like going to be physical therapist, physical therapist, physical therapist, and doing your art? How do they intertwine? How did right. and how did how did, how did how did you come to the realization that you wanted to pursue art and that you were going to do art? Because obviously, again, like you're talking about a very um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A very clear cut and dry profession versus a very ambiguous, creative, no pun intended, type of profession with the arts and artistic uh, avenues as right. chosen. Yeah, that and that's something that played out over a long period of time. And uh, you know, academically, like that's what I wanted to go to school for. I was still passionate enough about physical therapy or that field in general to continue that. So, but I took a year off uh, between undergrad and grad school because I wanted to, I didn't want to jump right into grad school, I wasn't ready. I was like, I need a break, I want to work a little bit, make some money, you know, and continue with artwork. Um, so within that year of when I stopped school, um, I had a full-time job uh, working in a PT clinic, making, you know, okay money. And uh, while I did that, I continued with the art. And, and I, I actually enjoyed that job a lot. I enjoyed the people I worked with. And then um, they knew about what I was doing with the artwork and they, they were supportive of it. And going into um, <clears throat> that spring period of time again, after almost a year of being done undergrad, is when I told them I was quitting respectfully and wanted to give art a try for a couple months, like full time. So I did that and, and it went pretty well. And in that period of time, I was also trying to decide, am I going to go to physical therapy school and continue with my academics? Right, because exactly. that's, a, that's, a, that's a big choice then, yeah. That's a big choice, yeah. So at that time, that's, you know, I, that was the plan all along was to continue with school. Um, and I, I was nowhere near the point with my artwork where I felt like I would commit to that, you know? Right. I, just, I wasn't comfortable with it, so I continued with school. Um, and then that, and that became the trend, you know, as I started school and went through school, art kept going like this and never, there was bumps in the road, but every year has gone up and up and up and up. And, uh, it's still, it never got to the point where I was like, all right, like, you know what, screw it. I'm dropping out or something like that, right. you know? And then by the time, like there were certain times where you're making money and you're like, all right, you know, I don't need to go to school anymore. And then comes another month where you make no money. And you're like, ah, uh, maybe I should say school. Sounds, Sounds like out. the beginning phases of entrepreneurship. Or uh, really yes. just like, just honestly, just, just business one on one. It's just how it is. You just don't. It's just, it is. just is. So that was just the battle all the whole time. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to finish school, finish what I started, get my degree, and then, you know, I can do both if I want, you know? But by the time I was done school last year, it's only been, it's only been one year. Not even one year. <laughs> what? By the time I was oh. done with that, I was already on a pretty good roll with the art. Yeah. With what I was doing, what I was accomplishing, you know, the, the revenue I was able to make for, for my business and all that. And then <clears throat> I just I just continued, you know, it's kind of like strike while the iron's hot, you know, and I'm, I just there's I just can't let it go. I can't drop it because then it's, it's a timing thing. Right, right, you know? right. And, and yes, you could say, oh, you can always get back into art or I can always go get a job. Right. And I think that's really, really powerful. And I think that the, yeah. the order in which you just said that is something that we really just overlook. It's like you always can get a job. I feel like to put yourself in a position to be out there and know that people know that you're doing something off the path is, is a consistent reminder to you that you're you're doing something different. And I feel like to do something different is to do the hardest thing, right? To be yourself is the hardest thing when everyone else is. So how hard is it to get a job and come back to that, right? You can easily get the job, but to come back to that level of being whatever it is that you were doing, that's the hard part, right? It's the reverse of what makes it so hard. It's really much easier and the reverse yeah. is the truth, right? So to your point, my, my question now is, so like how the hell did you do art and graduate school for PT because I know that in itself is really hard. And but like, if you don't already know, is art's really good, like really good. So how the hell do you do both those at the same time? You should play it off like it's again no big deal. Sometimes I look back and I'm like, I don't know how I did that. <laughs> that was a grind, right? A grind. Some sleepless nights. Some 
I don't even know sometimes. I, I really don't know how I did it sometimes, but I did it, you know. And I I wasn't able to put in the hours I do now, obviously, because it's what I do full time now. But um <clears throat> somehow, some way, you know, you know, there there's a will, there's a way. Let's just find a way. Let's just find a way. Let's just find a way. It's seriously so damn true. Like, it just is. It's a common trait that all legends have. They just right. figure the shit out. I you figure it out. You just scratch your chin trying to figure out how you did it. It's like <laughs> you just do, it, man. But I think it comes back to, to the consistency thing, you know. It's almost like you get in the habit of like you worry when you're not being consistent, when you're not doing something. Like if I went a whole day with not doing anything that is bettering my brand or what I'm trying to build, then I would feel like, you know, I would feel like, oh man, I can't be doing this. You know? right. So you gotta get in that mindset and, and be consistent, even if like while in school it's like a couple hours at nighttime that I'm able to commit to, which a lot of time that was the case, but you know, on the weekends, just making time to get stuff done, you know. Um, it was not easy. Not easy. What was like the biggest <laughs> fluke you had trying to do both at the same time? Biggest fluke? Yeah, where you just were like, this is gonna go really great, and it just flopped, and you were like, uh, and you're trying to juggle and like, make shit happen in the last second. Anything you can recall mm. that was like, I'll never forget this time when I was doing both these things at the same time. I, I wish I had a good one for you, but I don't think I do. I think, um, well, I think when I had opportunities to travel for internships for my last year of school, that's when it was like a third factor coming into play where not only am I like working for school, which is maybe less time because it's just you're working work hours and then you're done for the day, but I'm living in a totally different state while doing my art stuff still. <laughs> so I lived in Florida for eight weeks at one period of time, doing mm -hmm. math rotation, yeah. and then I lived in California for my big one for four months. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a lot of stuff out there with me. And that was probably like the hardest part. It's not only am I trying to work full-time hours at a clinic, where my responsibility is, I'm almost a full-time PT by the right. end of it. Like right. I have my own caseload, everything. I'm trying to do the art, and I'm also in a beautiful part of the world where I have distractions all around me. Right. Yeah, <laughs> so you don't have any more distractions. That was a struggle. That was a struggle. And you found a way. I found a way. Let's go. And so all that leads to the moment where you're like, yo, I'm going to do art full-time. So what was that like? What was the thing you were like, yo, I'm doing this? Um, Cause like I don't know any, I know very few artists who do your type of art. Who are, I don't really think I know any other ones besides you, honestly. Yeah. Who do art like you? And what would you classify your art? Like what types of art do you do? Just just to be clear, because I, I think it's painting, right? Yeah. Well, I I have an appreciation and knack for um, realism, a lot of detail, a lot of realism, but it's twisted with. Uh, my own kind of fictional ideas, okay. you know, my own, you know, and, and the slogan for my business, essentially my art is art with energy because right. I like to put a lot of energy into it and people to feel that, you know, okay. and you've, always, you've heard that in the past, but right. I have my own ways of doing that, you know, and a lot of sports artists that you see out there are like, to me, like they're, they're really talented. No doubt about it, but it's a little bland for me because right. they're just they're, a lot of time they're copying a picture. But right. you want some spice? Yeah, I want some spice. Like I want to be unique. You're the flavor. Um, yeah. You're the OG. I, I want to be unique. I don't ever want to get in a situation where someone's like, "Oh, that looks like that or that," you know? Right, right. It's like, no, this is distinct. Yeah. You're the flavor. I want to have my own flavor, my own style, my own look, you know, right, right. and that also sets you apart and and helps people have an identity with your work too right yeah the differentiation is <clears throat> your unique value proposition for everyone is your unique creativity right which is like obvious in that situation circumstance yeah. so so you go full time into this and what are your thoughts because there's entrepreneurs out there that listen to this or they want to be and they're like that sounds really scary so you're telling me like you had a full-time job lined up potentially and you went through freaking PT school yeah. and you dropped it to go pursue something where you weren't even sure, like where were you at right then? Like were you earning like a lot per month at that point or were you just kind of like skated by or were you just like, yo, F it, I'm going all in? Like, cause like, cause that's the question, right? Everyone wants to know that. It's like, so where are you actually at? 
when you make this call because it's easy if you have like 100 grand in the bank and you're like it's not a big deal but let's say you have like 100 bucks in the bank and you still went for it like what's you know what i mean you don't be be somewhere in between <laughs> it's not not like i was struggling with 100 bucks if i was at that point heading towards the end of school i don't know that might have caused me to make the decision because right. if i have that much money in the bank that means like why am i doing this right this isn't meant for me yeah. you know but no I, I was doing well enough where I had I have full fledged business and I was making money, you know, and um, seeing that and, and opportunities just coming consistently all the time, like where I'm to the point where I'm cutting stuff off because I don't I don't want to do it, I can't do it, or like I don't even need the money, you know. So getting to that point, I, I felt comfortable enough to keep pursuing it, you know. And then it's kind of like a game too, because you, you don't know, you know, like all of a sudden, like it just falls off, like, yeah, all right, well, that's that, you know, but that just hasn't happened. And, and you know, I, pray, I pray to God that, you know, I mean, I, I, I pray for my own beliefs, but that whatever uh, track I stay on is, is for the right reason. You know? Right. That'll, that'll, that'll uh, show itself to me. So a year later, <clears throat> Uh, having decided this is what you wanted to do, what have been your biggest lessons in entrepreneurship? Ooh, that's good. <laughs> patience. You know, and by the way, elaborate into those. Like, patience. Even because, better. Uh, elaborate into it with a story or anecdote of how oh, you learn. Absolutely. Yeah. Patience with people and opportunities, and um, you know, j just things that you want to happen that just don't happen right away and that in the moment you think it's not going to happen but you wait and you wait and then boom either that thing happens or something even better happens and you look back like wow i'm glad i was patient about it when i waited right. or not that i was patient that you know i'm able to see that waiting made it all worth it you know and and examples of that would be like um you know, have, you have a conversation with somebody and, and they seem interested or they seem like they, they want you to do a job for them, whatever. And then you follow up and you follow up and it kind of just falls off, you know? And it's just, it's really like, why? Like, why would you, like, almost lead me on or, or make it seem like you want to get a painting done or this opportunity will happen and, um, you know, that doesn't happen. So um, having that those situations really makes you realize you gotta be patient and you gotta just let, let things run its course and you just, you gotta, you gotta stay grounded and keep doing what you're doing and don't waste time worrying about those other people that aren't getting back to you right. or worrying about these things that aren't happening that right. you want to happen. Right. 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 Or one big frustration, worrying about an athlete who said they're gonna post your artwork and you know that that could that can blow up and they don't do it. Right, not getting attached to an outcome. Not right. getting attached to an outcome. Right. And, and it still happens to me, but yeah, I've gotten yeah. better at controlling <laughs> those managing emotions. Your expectations. Yeah. Managing expectations. That's huge. Expectations are massive <laughs> in life. Yeah. And not like I see it in so many other things just in my own life. Like you gotta set the expectation so that if you if you overshoot it, people are so happy. But set it so low that you can't undershoot it. Right. Because right. if you undershoot it, then you're screwed. Right, 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 right. And that's a huge lesson. Right. Leading people on, set you gotta set the mindset to a certain point right. so that you can't undershoot it, you know. And, and I think to a lot of it's like stay in your lane, don't get caught looking around because that's when you you can't control anyone else, only you. So it's exactly. pointless. It's like that great um, image of Michael Phelps beating that guy in the Olympics and the dude next to him is like looking at him as Michael Phelps is passing him yeah. and he's about to win the race and he loses because he's looking, looking away, right? <laughs> um, and then you go deeper. Right, I remember that. Right, right, yeah, it's a great photo. It's really, really articulated <clears throat> quite perfectly. And so was, of course, the first image that came to my mind. But then I think what you said was really great was that when you, with, yeah, with, yeah, literally, with the expectations, it's like, it's like, and then one, to go further with it, it's like obviously keep a really wide range of expectations. That way you're never too unexpected. And obviously as you get, um, as you start to get the expectations you don't want more frequently, you obviously build tolerance and you start to learn how to control your expectations and go like, yes, this guy said yes, 
but it doesn't mean it happens so it happens and even when it happens it can still be something beyond that he says no to right so you never always know until it just happens therefore the best thing to do is just to be and just know that your art's great or whatever it is you do is great and you just need to be patient stay in your lane and no matter what happens something good will come from the good things you do right serve yourself serve others serve the world and good things are going to come back to you yeah and i think another thing too this just came to my mind, but it was influenced from a friend of mine. I'll have to tell him I brought it up in your podcast I was on, but uh, he's in a whole different business, but his mindset is always like, you don't have to call it by money, but million dollar mentality, or like you could call it a successful mentality, whatever, but always like thinking in your mind that you are successful and that you have to act that way. Right. Like don't, don't make people feel like you need them. Yeah. You know, abundance, I mean? abundance. Yeah. Elevate your state of being and live in abundance. Elevation. Yeah, and 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 don't you know? Don't reveal to people that that you need them because you don't need. Them. I was gonna say that that and that's them, right there. Them. That's it. People get caught in that in between of like I do need them, but I pretend like I don't. Yeah. Which then it unconsciously manifests that they do through their actions, and they don't realize it until it's too late. Yeah. But the truth is, like, dude, I make this art because the art's great, and I love making. And if this person wants to be a part of my art, they will go there going to be. And that's on that. And I have no control. So I don't need shit because everyone else over here loves my art. So if this person wants to join, then we're great and we out here. And if those people like it, we out here. If they're both, we both out here, right? And it's managing that and living in that state of abundance that you're talking about. But it all starts, I think, and this is the most important thing. This goes for any business. It all starts with the best quality product or the best quality service you are capable of creating and producing. Yeah. If you just keep your eye on that ball, everything else will take care of itself. Mm -hmm. Right? Continue though, because this is this is fantastic. Yeah. You're <laughs> abundance. Right? When we're talking about abundance, this is You won't get it. <laughs> what the heck are you doing, bro? <laughs> You're wild. If you guys don't know this guy's insane. If you can't tell, he acts like a little, a little cough could mean a lot of things. He does, so he does. Mean... <laughs> That's what I was saying, you know. Yeah. Awesome. This is, the end, this is the end of me. Um <laughs> Could be. <laughs> uh, no, but um, but yeah. So having that approach to every situation, I still don't. I'm not perfect. None of us are perfect. I'm just saying, like, try to be that way. You're gonna make mistakes. Everybody's gonna make mistakes, and you're never gonna be perfect. But you gotta try to be that way. And the more consistent and habitual you can be with those things, the better. Um, <clears throat> you know, and I still get caught up sometimes. Uh, coming off that way, that I, that it, it may seem like I need somebody or that you know it's not an even playing field. Right. That's not me true. Right. You know. So what what helps you stay in your lane and not get caught looking or or like? Because I know obviously you're a visionary guy and you see where you want to go with this. What helps you stay grounded? Um, I think it's just a mental thing of just of just blocking it out. I don't know, I, I, and I, I think it's just like quickly revert back to what you're working on. Don't get caught up in it. Right. Don't get caught up in it. Don't get caught up in social media and, and looking at what other people are doing and letting that manifest into a negative state. Right, right, right. That you're you're happy for somebody having success, but that you're like, oh man, why is that happening to me? You gotta be patient. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You gotta be patient. Yeah, and know your journey. <laughs> and know, yeah. Right, right. I think that's and, it's, and, so hard. And it's sometimes hard to enjoy like the in the moment and the the process through it, but you gotta try to enjoy that and because then you can look back and look you know, look at everything I did to get there. Yeah, and I and you <coughs> the things you needed to get there, but I think the number one thing that, that is the reason you're where you're at is because the product is just absolutely spectacular. It's unique and you can't get it anywhere else. I promise you, if you have something unique, you can't get anywhere else. Eventually, you're ready to run. Because you're like, hey, I've done, I've had like, I've I've seen like all this artist work. This is the best thing, and you know that I know my art. Next thing you know, that person's like, yeah, this person's art. Today. Before you know, it, word spreads. Word of mouth is still the number one way, right? Yeah. But I think um, I, I like a lot of what you said there. I think there's a ton of validity to it, and. Uh, I mean, keeping keeping your eye on the ball, and keeping your craft on point, and uh, not not being on social media as much. And I think it's natural. Like we're we're designed, our mammalian brains are designed to compare ourselves because for thousands of years we walked around and wanted to make sure you weren't going to try and kill me. So naturally, we're like, is this guy going to kill me? 
<laughs> so we're gonna compare him because this guy better than me, is he stronger than me, is he smarter than me, is he better looking than me? Like these are all unconscious things that are happening to us based on thousands of years of evolution. It's hard to not do it. And of course, Instagram is the cesspool of it. It's like, we just sit there and scroll in the window, all the people that are doing better than us, but there's like, you know, a million people scrolling at the same time, looking at different windows. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, it's insane. And you have to think like, it's only a matter of time before you keep looking and eventually you find scarcity. When you came on to Instagram that day with abundance, and you were like, I'm so happy for this person. Before you know it, you're scrolling and now you're in scarcity. You're like, this person's better than me. They have more than me. I'm not good enough. Even though you're doing great, you're not good enough because that person's better, right? And it puts you into that, that mode and immediately when you get off, now you've right, shifted your energy. You're no longer in that abundance. You're not attracting that goodness to you. Your work suffers from it, right? It's like balancing that. So yeah. How do you balance with social media? Like, because you're on all the time. You're filming off about 30 times before we even got started here. So how do you do it? Because you, you have a very calm, cool composure. And I don't know if it's from the beard or... <laughs> it, well, 100% is the beard. Everybody, you can't grow a beard. I'm sorry. Oh, you're screwing me out of here. How do you do it? Seriously, though. It's really um, crazy. Because this is hard. Like, this, is, this is it. For all, think about all these young entrepreneurs, all these young people out there, and people, old people out there, people in general. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it is necessarily how do I do it. I think it's that I still struggle with it. Okay. You know? I respect that. It's open and honest. Like, I still struggle with it. You know, I get caught in it. But it's, it's when I get caught in it that you got to know how to retract from it. So, and, okay. So, this is important. So, what is your method to get back to being at the state you were before you got caught up? To just put my phone down. Okay. Put my phone down or get out of the app and go to like something that I'm working on right you now, go back to my project that I'm working on, um, or just go and work out or do something, you know, just don't get caught up in it. <clears throat> right, come back and ground yourself again in something yeah. that is exciting to you, that means it has value to you, so that you can, you know, get some of that energy back that you were in that other thought loop or other energy loop that you were living in, come back to that state of being. One more thing I wanted to mention too, and I think this is just so relevant, this conversation, is when we're talking about social media and we're talking about seeing people be successful, dude, even you, man, like, you're, you're crushing it on all fronts. I mean, like, you're, from a creative standpoint, you're killing it. From a business standpoint, you're killing it. Um, from a personal standpoint, you're on fire and you're doing things that are important to you and in alignment with you, and I can tell because of our conversations frequently. So it's like one thing that I wanted to mention though is because you just said even you, you get caught up in it. It's like one thing that I I paid attention to is when I first started on my personal development journey, I started reading a lot of biographies because I was in a place in my life where I was like, okay, for a long time I felt like I wasn't special and I didn't have anything in my ego, I guess I could say, right? My conscious awareness that I was like, I'm not that good. In my intuition, I was like, yo, you got something really special. I didn't know how to extract that or express it or like listen to it for real, which I think you can relate to. <clears throat> and um, it wasn't until I started reading these biographies that I started to understand that like, hey, these guys who are the most successful people of all time, arguably, like the Steve Jobs, the George Washingtons, the Lincolns, the, the innovators of the world, people that have changed this world to make it better or worse, et cetera. Like, they're telling me in their biographies and autobiographies that they were no different than me. The only thing that they had and they knew was that they were going to do what they were going to do. They were going to focus on it. They were going to be attentive to it. And they weren't going to stop. They weren't going to quit. And when I started to come to realize this, there was one in particular that I read too, I should say. The first one was Steve Jobs' biography in which he said uh, at a commencement speech, he said, look around. He said, everything you see here, everything we call life was made by someone no smarter than you. I never forgot that. <laughs> and I was like, this is coming from the guy who like innovated the world. You feel <laughs> like in the, in the 2010s, you're like, the photos, <clears throat> this, that, and everything else. You're like, holy cow, like this is unbelievable. And he said that, I was like, wow, I can do this. Like, I can definitely do this. Like I had time on my side, I'm only 20 years old, I'm reading this. Like uh, he was 22, he started his company, et cetera. Like it's all of a sudden relatable. And you feel like, yo, I can do this too. Right. And the second one was George Washington when I read his biography and did and, and found out that uh, he left the military. He was actually British, he left the military when he was 23. And it wasn't until he was 42 years old that he was called to lead the Continental Army as the general of the Continental Army. And I was like, wow, he wasn't put on until he was 42. I was like, yo, we're eager. I was like, we need to chill out. Like, okay, it's great that you have aspirations, but the thing that happens when you're 20s for every person is ridiculous. 
right? And I heard an interview, and I, it might have been a Gary Vee interview with somebody on the West Coast who, who built a really big, like, big agency back in the day. Um, and he always said with all the talent he ever saw, he said, gradual success is the best success. He said, those are the people that last the longest and have the best careers. And after that, I was like, all right, cool. Slow and steady wins the race. We out here, abundance, no hurries, no worries. We're just doing it and we're going to enjoy the process. And I'm going to try my hardest not to get caught up in all that, right? Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. And so, so what are some projects you're working on right now, though, that you're really excited for, right? Because you got a lot of stuff going on. You got, you got Bayou Jordan over here. Bayou. Bayou Jordan, <laughs> making moves, doing all kinds of stuff. Love so, me down there, by the right. Bayou. Yeah, you've been flying all over the country, you're doing all kinds of things. Like, what do you want to do? And, and what does it bring? What kind of value does it been bringing to you in your life? Like, how are you feeling creative? I'm feeling, I'm feeling creative uh, because, like, that last piece I did, the Joe Burrow one, was the first time that I've done something where I think I might have been the only person that did it. Only person, like, a project I'm working on right now is a Kobe Bryant piece, right. which I did not want to rush that. And, right. and there's many artists that put out really great work, and that's great that they were able to get it done that quick. I just I couldn't do it that quick, and I was so busy like handling the Burrow stuff and, and just everything that was um, transpiring with that. But um, <clears throat> with the Kobe piece, like my mine's gonna be unique, at least I hope and think it is, um, and I want it to be that way. And it took me a month of thinking about it and like looking at pictures to finally have it click. I needed to click. I've realized that is that I can't just jump into something. I need to click. With the burrow thing. What do you mean by that? I need I need to see that picture where I'm like, that's it. Right, right, right. Where you're like, that's like iconic. Yeah, because I, I was struggling for a while. I was just trying to like force it. I, I, maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit, but also just like not finding the right pick because like it, it's it's there's so many factors to it emotions don't want to be too sad or too exciting or to be like dramatic but not too dramatic right, right. it's hard so it's, it's the hard. shade and the color of the and then and then and for myself like what do i what do i want my message to be of this piece you know and then what does kobe bryant mean to me because i wasn't as big a fan as maybe some people were growing up and i, I can't really say that I was but i can appreciate who he was and, and the tone that he set in sports world but um but yeah the burrow one was was the first time that i feel like i did something that nobody else had done you know and i did it so quick and now that, that was a piece where that night i started it you know and i don't i don't know what came over me i just i just dropped everything and i was you know i'm just gonna do this you know you know like you hear you hear of artists doing stuff especially in the sports world because it's all about timing a lot of times like if you want to if you want to make a lot of sales of, of prints and it, it catches fire essentially, which is important, even though you don't want to rush the stuff, timing is also important. So it was the first time that I did something, I think at the perfect time. And like I said, a week later I dropped it and boom. Yeah. Like that, like I, nothing has ever been to the point that was that. And, and it, but it was a buildup, you know, my, my platforms have built to that point of notoriety Ready. Right. I already had, you know, my decently built uh, audience of fans and people that follow my pages. So, you know, and when you get to that point, you build so many relationships and so many people that watch or follow your work. Maybe not a huge fan yet, but it all it takes is one person to share it, one person to to see it, like those kinds of things, you know. Um, but yes, I'm working on. Kobe Bryant piece, and I'm excited about that. I'm hoping to finish it by next week. Um, and then and then I need to hunker down and work on this this massive uh, commission job I had from last year that I've slowly been whew, slowly been uh, thinking about and working on. Um, but now it's time to execute. Gotcha. So that'll, that'll definitely be the most time consuming thing I've ever done for any project. Really? That's what I, uh, I'm going to do. But I also want it to be like super special and and unique. And I want it. I want it to be monumental more than anything I've done. And it's, and it's going to be hard to for me. It's going to be hard to surpass the last one I did because I'm like that did so well. You know how can I top that? You know. Right. So it's always comparing back to the one right. 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 You know. And on top of that, I've been sitting on another, in my opinion, really amazing piece 
that I haven't even reached yet. And I finished it back in December. And I'm really like, it comes back to patience of why I haven't released it yet. So I, I've had to really uh, bite my tongue on why it hasn't come to fruition yet. Right. But I can tell you there's another one that's already done that I haven't even got yet that I think could really pop. Let's go. So I'm excited about that. So, so yeah. let's talk about timing. How long was it taking to do this? <clears throat> um, anywhere from, I'd say a minimum of 15 to 20 hours, like start to finish. Like, but that's after, and you can't count the hours of thinking about it and looking at pictures and designing, you know? Yeah. And I, sh I should count that more often, but it's hard. It's just part of the process. Like for the Burrow one, luckily I didn't waste too much time on that. I, I had I had the iconic picture, which I saw, and I was like, you know what, that's the one. And I don't know if you listen to other content and talk about that, but there was an Instagram post of this like NFL meme page that said, this needs to be painted and hung in the LSU library. That, that's when it clicked for me. I was like, you know what? This guy's probably right. <laughs> you know? Is it in the library? No, no. Oh, yeah. maybe, maybe soon enough, though. That'd be, that'd be sweet. But I will tell you that all of Joe Burrow's family has the canvas hanging on their wall. That's his father, right. now his two brothers, and Joe, I'm waiting to make it happen for him. But Let's go. This one. So, and I, I try to feel that out and ask that because what I realized as well is that some of these guys don't want a picture of themselves hanging on Right, yeah, that's fair. You have to be careful with that, and you got to realize that. Because you're, like, I'm coming from a place where, like, oh, who wouldn't want a really cool piece of artwork of themselves and what they've accomplished hanging on the wall? That's some, some guys don't want that. Yeah. But, um, anyways, um, shoot. How much time? <laughs> How much time? <laughs> Um, anywhere from 15, I'd say the most hours I put into one project was maybe like 70 hours. Wow. 70 hours maybe. Um, maybe it'll be close to that with the Kobe one, including the amount of time I spent just like thinking about it. Here and there, it was never like in one shot. It was like when it started, like I was already looking at pictures and and just seeing people releasing work, which which adds a little bit of pressure to you. Like, yeah. oh, I can't, I can't put some out. No. Yeah, it's no. Surreal. Of course, all no. the things you look at are all art. No, but it's really cool stuff coming out. And not only that, but seeing it, I'm like, I can't do that now. I can't do that now. I can't do that now. Which is fine, because that helps me realize how much more unique I need to be. Right. <clears throat> um, so yeah, that's the time range. The next project, I estimate it's going to take hundreds of hours. It's going to take a while. Wow. Yeah. But so, really cool. So I think this is also important, too. I, want to, I really want to know this for my own selfish gains, but also for everyone else, too, because I think everyone has a really unique creative process. So I'm curious. What is your creative process like? How does it go? In your head? <clears throat> like, how does this work? Because, again, like when it comes to creativity, everyone has their own flavor. And it's hard to describe it sometimes when you just know, know what should be done or how it should be done or like what looks good. You don't know, but you kind of know. So like, how do you know? Because you like go from the conceptualization process to the actual execution of it to whatever else you do. I don't know all the details, but I, I'm curious. I think like most things, doing your research helps because like for the, for the burrow piece, <clears throat> I did my research and I also did the research to gain inspiration because I was already inspired enough from what I knew, but I, but I think that's another realization is that the more inspiration I can have, the more emotion I can have attached to it, the better it's going gonna, it's gonna to turn out. Interesting. Because I already appreciated Joe Burrow just from the fact of what I hear about in the media and watching him talk, you can just tell like he's a certain type of person. And then digging deeper into his story and all that like really inspired me. Um, even like, and, and I've talked about this so many times, like on other things I've been on, but like little details like that I heard of, of the, the week of the game, his phone broke and like the coach and people were like, like they were worried. They're like, Hey, like, we'll make sure you get your phone. And he said, no, don't worry about it. We have a game this week. You know, don't worry about my phone. <laughs> we have a game this week. Right, right. Like, I think that's so badass. You know, yeah. that's how people should be. <clears throat> In that in that moment, you yeah, know, I agree. Like, I think it's pretty cool. And even now, you see, like, I have not seen him on social media since that since the game ended. Because
because he's been so focused on prepping for his next stage, you know. Right. That's what I'm excited about. Comes up in about a month, yeah. Yeah. So, <clears throat> um, creative process. Yeah, I'm trying to think through like the steps of it. So I think I think that's the first step though is making sure that I'm inspired by it and right. not just doing it. Right, to right. Do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause that's, that's because then that wouldn't be authentic to you, right? And, and, and you're just doing it just to do it. What are you really doing it for? Same thing with the code piece too. Like I spent a lot of time watching videos, hearing people talk about him. Just all these different pieces of content. Interesting. Very yeah. abstract then. That I can like, see. And then what? That yeah. stuff like brought the visual to your mind? Brought the visual and like the, the main things of who he was. Like, what are the main things? Mamba mentality, Mamba itself, like the aggression energy to that. Um, a father figure, you know, a creative person, you know, like all these different things. Um, you know, and, and what what do I want to take away to be from the piece? You know, like, what, like the title of it, like what that means, like the idea to it, you know? Because the title for this is Mom and Mentality. That was my conclusion. I was like, you know, I think that that's what I wanted to give off the most. Because right. that, that um, inspiration and gift that he brought to the world of, the, of his mentality, it's a classic mentality that people follow will continue forever. Yeah, I agree. Like he left the legacy from that, not only from the success in basketball, but like that extra, that extra passion he brought. Right. <clears throat> so I think that's pretty cool. Um, and same thing with the, the piece that I said I'm sitting on. Like I did the same thing with that. Like did my research a little more. I already knew enough about that athlete to do what I did, but so that's, so that's first step. And then comes looking at pictures and, and finding different angles and different things. I like expressions on faces and stuff like that. Um, and then thinking and then taking all these pics into my, my program on my iPad and like erasing, adding, cutting, cropping, you know, putting stuff together until I find a design or designs. I usually make a couple, a bunch of them and, and say, all right, like, which one looks best. Sometimes I choose, sometimes I reach out to others, like yourself and other people like, like, hey, what do you guys think of this? Because sometimes I meet people like points them out to me. Of course. Like, oh, like, maybe you shouldn't have that in there because of this, you know, like, oh, maybe you're great, you know? So sometimes I'm not, I'm not, I'm not afraid to ask other people what they think. Because um, I value that a lot. And I try to ask people who like know what they're talking about for that athlete or right. it is of that. Like, I'm not just going to ask anybody. Right. I can ask someone who knows their stuff. <clears throat> so, and not someone who's just like, oh, it looks great. You yeah, know? yeah. You don't need a yes, man. I might ask mom. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, it looks great. <laughs> yeah. Which one? <laughs> right, right, right. They all look great. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and then after that, um, then I start doing actual artwork, which takes the longest, but is uh, potentially the easiest part, because really? I know what I want to do. True. It's the most meticulous and time consuming, but I know what I want to do. And that process can be more fun because in it, like usually it, it never ends up looking the exact same as the design. Mm -hmm. Things just come into my mind. I love where you're going with this. You discover more about it. You discover it. more right, about right, it when right. you're doing so cool. it. And, yeah. and you and you see okay. what does or doesn't look good. Right. We're still so rat hole. Yeah. You're like, oh, I could do it all these different ways. I know. Oh, yeah. You caught in that too. Yeah, yeah. dude. I, I've been to other rooms. I love the way you describe that. Um, so here's a really weird question that I'm super curious about. So like, do you have any like like specific, like, you know, there's the Bob Ross way of like how he does things. Like, do you have any specific strokes or like trademark Jordan Spector type things that you do that you know no one else does? There's nothing I do that I don't know if anybody else does it, but um, I would say something unique. I like a lot of my techniques when it comes to painting or drawing are stuff that I've just made up. I, ne I never learned it from a video or anything like that. I you just, can go to art school. I can go to art school, <laughs> you know? I love that. I made, so a, I made a post today saying happy birthday to my dad because he's told me a lot when I grew up. He's he's my my biggest mentor for art. He's really? an artist himself. I I will always consider him a better artist than myself because he's more well rounded. Right. He went to school for art. He was a toy designer for over a decade, and uh, he like anything. He's more creative than I am. 
Really? Anything he does is just like, how did you come up with that? Or he's just so intuitive, you know? Right. Like, and he's mixed, Mr. Fix It too, you know? Like, he just, yeah, that's why he's a maintenance manager for a facility, you know? He just knows how to fix stuff. He's, he knows so much. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, the parents have that way of it being, right? And, and I don't want to go too much too much off topic, but he, he was telling me recently about this like idea he had for this this uh, creation he wants to make. And I had no idea he had this these ideas. And it, like, <laughs> it, like I would love for him to tell you or somebody else, but it's crazy what he wants to do. Basically, he wants to make this sculpture where it's like, it's someone's head, but it's a brain, but the brain lights up. And on one side is like, is like good thoughts, the other, Side is bad thoughts and how you got a real how the bad thoughts can overpower the good thoughts. Like, right, right. It's crazy. Yeah. Anyway, very current. Yeah, right. very current. It's yeah. interesting how that all works with this collective unconscious we have going on right, right here. We just get crazy ideas about how we all need to fix what's going on upstairs. Like it's a serious thing. Yeah. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it's the whole thing, right? Talking about mom mentality. You're talking about your dad coming with crazy ideas. You're over here creating epic stuff. And you didn't go to art school to do it, which I think is so important, right? Because everyone's like, oh, you have to get a degree because it's an art. It's like, just do and be, right? You know, and I will, and I, I will say one thing. Obviously, the apple never falls far from the tree. Your dad was an artist. You're an artist. My dad was a coach. And I'm a coach, right? So sometimes those things happen. Not always, but sometimes. Yeah. And uh, I just think it's cool as you explain your creative process. So one more thing, too, because I think this is interesting. And you kind of alluded to this at the very beginning. But what makes specter art specter art like what are a couple of little things you do that are like yeah these are like trademarks these are things that try to incorporate into every piece that people might not be aware of right behind the scenes of how the artist does the art right black background always i wouldn't say always you do do black backgrounds a lot i don't think about it i don't know it's just it's just standard now black yeah. background i don't know i don't know interesting that's, that's just that's the unique part of what i do and another thing that people always point out, and I just I just do it a lot because it, I don't know, it just adds drama. But I, I have always a little bit of fog or smoke in there. Right. It just adds drama. I think it's cool, you know? Yeah. It's like it's like the moment. Right, 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 know? right. It's like it's basically <clears throat> like if you could see energy, that's what it would look like. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you could if you could look back into the moment, like you're looking back at it. Like there's smoke in oh, there. Oh, I get what you're saying. Because like, okay, it's a memory. Yeah, yeah, it's a memory. Great. Okay, yeah, got you. Yeah, so that's the thing too. And you know, a lot of more like energetic, like guys roaring. So pieces I've done have like right. electricity in it. Right. Pete and multiple people. I think even you and, and James have said like super, like super saiyan there. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. Style, which I don't mean to do. But it seems know. like you capture people at the height of an emotion. Height. Which is very difficult. Like how? Like what's too much? What's too little? Right. Very, very slippery slope. As an artist, like it's a track, especially when you're dedicating seventy hours to a piece. Right. You want to make sure, like, you really capture that energy of the moment as if you were there. Mm -hmm. Right. Even though you weren't. That's why the face is the most important part. Really. Mm -hmm. Interesting. What's the, how, so? How do you do a face? Like I feel like when I was a, an artist, I, I could never do a face. And I, then I would get too mad at myself, and I think it sucked. So I quit. I always, I, I think I only, yeah, I always start with the face. Really? Always start with the face. That's super weird. Why? Because that's the hardest part. Really? So you figure you get it done first. Yeah. You get it done first. first and and the then. Because that's what everyone's looking at, yes, right? Yeah. And then I got, I mean, over time it might evolve, too. I might have to change things with it because the face is so difficult. You might not see it right away if it's right or wrong. Um, <clears throat> and, and you can't make up the face. Like, there are some artists out there that I, I think I met and I know of that's just like, they make, they're crazier than me from the standpoint that they make paintings straight from their head. I'm like, how did you create that from your head? I need to look at something right, right now. I need to, for someone's face, I need to look at their face. Right. I need to see a picture of their face. And maybe I can go outside the box a little bit with it, but like, how are you going to make someone look like who they are without seeing their face? Yeah, so, that's crazy. So, I have another question for you, and uh, <coughs> I forgot it, so I need to remember it. <laughs> it's eluding me. Oh, darn. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was really good too. And it was on the topic of 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 you creating via the face, 
and I'm totally lost. And this happens to me occasionally as well. So we brought it out here. But regardless, obviously, I, I mean, I think what you created, obviously, over time is continuously evolving. So where do you feel like your pieces of artwork are going to evolve in the next couple of years? Are you going to continuously do these same things? Are you going to venture out in other areas? Like, where do you see yourself moving with the type of art that you're creating? I think after the last piece I did and, and the next one I'm doing is that I want to do more like, <clears throat> I want to continue what I'm doing with these energetic pieces, but I also like doing pieces now that have a statement to it, that tell a story to it. Okay. Uh, like I didn't even say it about the burrow piece, but like there's a note on the ground of the piece that says, you can't do it, you won't make it. That is the painting. Everything else is like monumental, but that's something I added, and I think that's what makes it so unique. Yeah. And that was the whole reason I did it, because that is a statement in itself. Like, that guy is such a chip on his shoulder, right. because nobody believed in him. But I mean, I'm sure there's some people that did. Right. For the most part, to do what he did, nobody thought he could do that. Even in the past season of him getting, no, no he's not going to go all the way, you know? No, he's not going to. He's not going to have the greatest season ever in college right. football. Right. Know? Yeah, that's insane. Crazy. Like, like you got to think about that. And even if you're not a sports fan, to accomplish something like that is amazing. So I had that note in there to like, be that reminder forever. Like, I want people to see that in the artwork and, and remember that you can't let anybody tell you what you can or can't do. Simple as that, you know? Yeah. Even your parents. Even your parents, especially when it comes to entrepreneurship, because they're usually not going to understand unless they walk yeah, the same the path. Line. Right. One thing that I always talk about about my clients is journeys you know. Focus on the journeys you've actually walked. If you know those journeys, <laughs> you're going to be able to relate to people on them who are both behind you on that same journey in like a totally different way. Right. It's like imagine you're ahead of someone and you go back to escort them to where you are. Like you know the path, you've been there. But imagine you do that on a different path. You didn't know where you're going. So it's like, how do you know? Like, everything's a little off, a little different. Yeah, you can visualize to get yourself nice and prepared, but it's not the same. Yeah. You feel me on that? Yeah. yeah, like, it's just like something I think about a lot because I think it's so applicable. And especially for me in the coaching space, which is a whole other topic, which is really not part of this conversation, but I think it's applicable in that way. So, yeah, dude, I mean, I think that everything you're doing, and I love the little details that you add, stuff like that. I and mean, then you have some stuff on Weapon X. Like, you always have a little hidden theme in there adds a flavor to it. It's like an Easter egg. If you look at hard enough, you find something that you weren't necessarily expecting to find that makes it like, wow, this is epic. This is sick. This is so cool. Gotta have it type of stuff. You know what I mean? Details matter. Yeah. Detail oriented. Right. right. Detail oriented person. Right. And details matter in the artwork. Right. And that's why I put them there. So either you gotta find it or it's right there in your face. Right. But I put it in there for a reason. So, so I mean, we talk a lot. We talked about all kinds of things. Obviously, your journey up until now, what you're doing with your art, where you're going with it, etc. As far as from a business perspective, how do you manage running an art business? Because I don't think that's something anyone really talks about. Like, how do you do that? Like, what, what, how do you even earn in that regard? Like, what do you do? Because I'm sure there are artists out there that would probably need to hear this. Yeah, that that would need to be a discussion for another day, but <laughs> I'll, I'll sum up as quickly as I can sure. that it's like any other business. It's like any other business as far as you like, there's different departments to it. Right. There's the, the, there's the person who's creating the products, right. you know, and then like for, for a, a musical artist, like they're creating a product, but there's marketing, there's product fulfillment, right. there's advertising, right. um, there's networking, right. one of the most important parts, there's maintaining and building relationships, <laughs> there's social media, which ties into marketing and advertising, um, there is organization of processes of how to do things, right. Because then when you start to hire people, which like I'm trying to get to that point of having employees, and I have two guys now, one is a business advisor, I like to call him, and another is like a guy who strictly does paid advertising. And and I what I've learned from other mentors of mine are artists that are successful here in Philadelphia or elsewhere in the sports space, 
is that you have to have a team around you. You can't do it all on your own. And you need to focus on what you're best at. For me, one of the best is artwork. <clears throat> There's things that I've come to enjoy that I, that I like doing, like, like selling or talking to people, or I love going to my shows and meeting people and hearing compliments, like, oh, this is great, this is dope, or whatever. And hearing people, like, their own perspective on it or what it means to them or how it inspires them. And that's another big thing, too, is, like, hearing people that are inspired by me. You know, I know this other artist who he's had probably over 50 other artists draw a portrait of him. I think that's like one of the best compliments and rewards you could ever have. Right. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Anyways, but um, running, running a business around it is, is tough. And, but you got to take it one step at a time. Right. So and I've spent three to four years building that right. and realizing like, um, nowhere near where it needs to be yet. But Isn't that crazy? It's always longer than you think, right? <clears throat> oh, it's always It's going to be good, but shouldn't it? I mean, like, if you want to build a large building, like a cathedral, shit didn't happen in three days. Yeah. It took 100 years. Yeah. Think about that. Back in the day, to build a cathedral, the great architect, you never even say be complete. Yeah. It's your work for life. That's, <laughs> why, that's why I like architecture. I respect, I respect that. That's crazy. I couldn't, I can't imagine. I'm going to do it, right? But, my question to you, I wanted to cut you off because it's important. Out of all the different business uh, functions, the functions of the business, which do you think was the most important for you to develop in the last year? In the last year. Yeah. So, you know, we're talking year three, year four. Well, let's, let's just say this. What was the one that was the most, after you found out what you were really good at, what was the next thing you felt like you needed to do? And then now, where where last year, have you felt like you like okay, this was something I turned on and it really started changing my life. The next thing after like putting my art out there in general, <clears throat> um, and by putting it out there in general, what do you mean by that? Well, like I like I knew I was a good artist, yeah. I, but I didn't know I was good enough to to make it into a yeah. career. But um, but I think the next step after that was how am I gonna how am I gonna make a business? Right. How am I like? What am I gonna sell? What am I selling? What are like? What are people buying? You know. So I think that started the process of learning on your own. Like, where do I where do I start? And and I think within that, an important thing is to ask questions. Ask people. Copy people, right? Not in a bad way, but in a way where like you are respecting their success and you are almost mimicking or trying to take what they do. And, all right, let me set up my website like that. Or let me like, all right, if they're doing like these print sizes, maybe that's a good way to start, you know, stuff like that. And just be honest and ask people too. Like sometimes people are not going to be humble and they think they're above you and not answer your question. But a lot of times people will gladly answer. Like I, I get hit up all the time. Like, and people, I love now when people are Instagram, like, oh, I can't believe you, you thought that you answered me on such a big account. I'm like, Right, right. This is a big account. Like, yeah. dude, you have like this many followers. You answer me, like, right. I'm just a normal person, like, yeah. and I answer everybody. Yeah, everybody. Why is that important to you? That's important to me. I can tell it's one of your values. Something, it is something one of your values. there. Something there is a value, right? And we'll call it humility. Right. Humility. None are better or worse than another, only in different stages of life. So. Yes, and there, there's a lot of different factors to that. Like one of which is just generally like. I enjoy like knowing that my knowledge to somebody else helped them right. and seeing them grow from it. But also, um, <clears throat> I think just comparing it to like, all right, what would I want? What would I want if someone, if I message someone down there, I don't want them to answer me. And I, I can't stand when somebody doesn't answer that I think should answer or things mm -hmm. like that. And commute, like to me, I think a big reason to why I am where I am is because of communication. And I always answer and I always get back to people as soon as I can, you know? And even if it's like me saying no about something, like they need that clarity, you know? Cause I, I know how that feels. So I try, I try to be as genuine and uh, um, trying to consider it as I can. And, and that's also why on my one, on the first website I had, which I saw on Etsy, it's like, you can have your own page on Etsy, right. which is something I always advise any artist just starting out, is to not, you don't have to make your own website yet, 
but put your stuff on a website that already has a platform for you to make a profile. Right. Just start somewhere. Right. And then once you make a sale, okay, so we bought that. That means that means the market accepted it. Right. The market accepted what you put out there. Right. So it can sell. It has a chance. Yeah. And if it doesn't, that sucks. You can't have emotions about that. Right. The market spoke. Manage expectations, et cetera. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I think that's a good starting point. And uh, I was going to say, on Etsy, that's, that's why I think I have over a hundred five star reviews. Wow. Of people I've only ever had a couple bad reviews of people that just suck, you know. Right. And 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 that also comes back to whether it is or isn't my fault, always being attentive to people's customer service questions or issues they're having. Like with the borough one, that became a huge time draining thing and stress is that emails every single day of this issue with an order this and that but like you have to answer those people you have to be attentive and you have to please other people in that manner right you have a great experience so they you know obviously do you right yeah tell people it's awesome and, then, and a lot of that applies to any business like yeah that's why the, the principle of it like the little right, nitty gritty right, right. is like it, it's different but like the principles of like social media Make a website, right. drive traffic to it, right. you know, and you hear like these big guys like Gary Vee say a lot of this stuff. Like, it's not hard. It's not a hard concept. It's time consuming and hard to set it up right. and, and get into it. But, um, but yeah. Um, so back to your very first question, I think that was the first step. Is like, how do I build a business around this? Like. You know, <clears throat> let me make that page on Etsy. Let me make Instagram, Facebook. That was like where I started. Etsy, I had Instagram, and I had Facebook or Twitter, whatever, and I started building on that. Um, and then within the last year, I think the biggest thing that I um, that I worked on was that. <sighs> it's it's been an evolution of this, but realizing and executing and trying to make it a a uh, priority to start to build that team around myself you know and, and and you can't it's not always gonna be there you gotta wait for it right but if you're if you're actively like making a priority it'll come yep you know um like the biz the business advisor i have now he approached me back in november you know, he came to me and he's, he's a part of what right. I do. He's, he's a mentor to you. He's a mentor to me, but he helps with X, Y, and Z. And, but he, he can't do everything. You know, that's, I mean, I'm an ads guy, but like, I need a lot more people if, if it's going right. to keep growing, you know? How, um, how helpful has having a mentor been for you? It's really good. Because as you know, entrepreneurship is lonely. Yeah. <laughs> it can be lonely and sometimes it's as simple as bouncing an idea off just to get that affirmation for yourself that you're on the right track. Right. Even though like from someone else's point of view, you're like, yeah, of course you're on the right track. Right. Yeah. Right. That's a great idea. But you don't always know. You, your mind always tricks you or plays games with you, you know? Yeah. But you gotta be in control of it and get that affirmation uh, from other people. So. Dude, so major moves for you, man. Wow. A lot packed in here today. Wow. Um, yeah, we've covered many different things, including your journey, um, obviously through sports and football, how that inspired you to be an artist, and then up through your actual <coughs> playing days, concussion, putting you in a position where you took the, the next steps of your journey and getting into art more, but also doing PT stuff, and then signing all in on art and the creative process, and how you've been playing the game and being involved, and all these different things business wise. So, you know, in the next next few years, where do you see Spectre Art and yourself moving to? Like, what is this turning into? I know you said you're gonna hire a team, and all that stuff's gonna come, of course. But like, where are you headed with your art? And like, what are you really excited for coming up? I'm really excited for the, the pieces I'm putting out and the ideas I've had and um, the team I'm building and building on that <clears throat> and seeing the success we've had as far as like sales going, seeing the return on the work you put in, you know? Yeah. And uh, I, I'm excited because I'm trying to build like an operation in itself to, to do more events locally, but but 
I'm not the one running them. I have somebody somebody to run them and, and build that side of yeah. them. Uh, but I think my I think my biggest focus is is building my online business and and building my e-commerce platform and and continually putting out like dope work right. you know stuff that inspires people stuff that people like stuff that people want hanging on their walls and um and also the, the relationships are really too you know like striking up like legit collaborations or yeah. Big time relationships and, and uh, stuff like that. There's so many things I'm excited for and that I'm working towards. It's, it's not one thing in general. Yeah, the next time we talk, I want to go into all that stuff and talk about how you network and do all the things you do because obviously you're super good at it. And I think yeah. it'd be interesting for people to hear about. But um, it's exciting where you're heading, dude. It's been really cool to watch you grow consistently since that day you got that pass and, and before that when I met you. Like, so many cool things have happened for you, and it's been such a pleasure watching your growth in the last few years and seeing how it's transcended and all the cool work you're working, you know, all the things you're putting out there and how people are receiving it. And obviously, I've been the borough piece, like, just so much cool stuff. Um, but, dude, with that said, the last question for you, and this is like a super important question I ask everybody at least once, is when you're on your deathbed, what are you going to look back on and be like, this was my life, this memory, this, this image of my life is what I lived for. And this is what made me happy. Mm. <clears throat> um, okay. Is that the one thing or can it be a couple? Sure. Same thing. Um, <clears throat> I think it would be, I mean, a pretty cliche one is, but it's important is, is knowing I gave my all, you know, knowing that I, put my, my full effort into what I was doing. Right. And um, <clears throat> I think a second one is inspiring people, either through my artwork, or probably both through my artwork, but also to follow their dreams right. and go, go after it and learn from me and what I've been able to teach them. And then I think the third is, is uh, providing for my, my family. Right. And uh, like, a big like dream and really cool thought and it might get this one soon is having my family all my family like working for me but like it's almost a family business type thing that's you know awesome I mean? I love I that. like I, I just love the idea of that and, and allowing my parents to do something that they enjoy cool. and, and that they it's gonna feel good for them because they you know that they're helping me right you know yeah. but i can trust everybody right you know and it, like i think that that would be really cool Shout out to you, dude. I'm excited for you, man. That's a really good answer. Yeah, right. You gotta be careful out here in these, in these you know, times. Um, with that said, we're gonna get something to eat. Uh, really appreciate having you on today, dude. Where can people find you if they want to know more about your artwork, want to see your work, want to buy your work, etc.? Where can they get these work? So Instagram, Twitter is at Specter underscore Art. Facebook is just Specter Sports Art, and the website is SpectorSportsArt.com. Right That's really it. I'll put all that stuff in the bio. You're going to text me, please. And, um, dude, with that said, dude, really appreciate you again. And uh, I'm so excited for you. Honestly, dude, like, you just crushed it. Like, when we first met, I never knew you had these talents. And I'm very, very happy that you're expressing them. You're using your unique gifts to serve this world. And like we said, man, legends find a way to make it happen. And sometimes you just shrug because you're like, I'm not, I just do. And, like, that's it. That X factor is legends find a way. You know, like that, it needs to be something that we all talk about because we all have our own version of that. We don't always access it. But when you love what you're doing so much, you're so passionate, you're so purposeful in it, it just emerges and you just do. And it's that level of being that takes us to the next spot, it takes us to the, the real, real place we want to be. And it's almost like we just floated up there. You know what I mean? I love it. Yeah. I'm, I'm, excited, I'm excited for this guy too. Big things coming. We out here, dude. We got swords. Uh, no, seriously, we're moving to California in a couple of days, so life's about to get interesting. But with all that said, ladies and gents, Specter Art, Jordan Specter in the house, so grateful for you. Next time we have him on, be totally different pieces. We'll talk about it, probably have more high tech setup, and uh, we'll go from there. Much love to you all. Use your gifts, serve one world, legends find a way. We out here, baby.